Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome uh, everyone to Muhammad Qasim's channel where we're discussing Muhammad Qasim's dreams about the end times. Uh, and today's topic uh, is about the Dajjal. Uh, just wanted to confirm that uh, we have the audio working. So if there's any issues, uh, if you can please inform on our uh, chat here so we can work that out. Uh, we just had a problem with our equipment and uh, the audio wasn't working. Uh, but as far as what we can see, the audio is working. So we will continue through, inshallah. Um, previously, uh, well, first of all, uh, it's a very special occasion. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have the opportunity uh, to... Uh, relive the uh, time or the uh, way that Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, performed uh, specific uh, activities to uh, Allah and we remember this on the day of Eid al-Adha so I wish you all a happy Eid and uh, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your sacrifices and your prayers uh, and grants you all special mercy and blessings uh, inshallah ta'ala in this world and akhirah um okay so uh continuing on our discussion today we are talking about the jal so we have discussed that uh, previously that the malhamatul kubra occurs uh, and then we've got the world war 3 uh, where uh, major uh, countries of islam in the middle east uh, they fall victim uh, to the world war 3 and then following on from that pakistan lifts up uh, and defeats uh, India in Ghazwai Hin uh, by the mercy of Allah and the help of 3,000 black fighter jets. And then Pakistan is uh, able to liberate all of the Muslim world uh, from the Middle East uh, before defeating USA and Russia. Now, after this time, there is a period of peace uh, where uh, uh, everything uh, that is in the earth comes out Essentially, there's no one that remains hungry. Uh, and Muhammad Qasim describes that specifically in his dream that there's a period of peace and prosperity where Islam is spread throughout the world. Um, now, this peace period lasts for about a decade. Uh, and then after that comes the time of the Jal, where the Jal emerges. Now, when I started uh, researching about this topic, uh, I realized that this was a very big topic. Uh, and it was important that we cover all the main points. So for that purpose, we're going to break this topic down into two sections. Uh, today's uh, discussion will be more so about the Jal's identity, his appearance, um, and what abilities and powers the Jal will have. Uh, and then in the next topic, we will cover the wars that the Jal brings and uh, how Isa al -Islam will come uh, and Isa al -Islam will kill the Jal, uh, and after which, uh, as we know, that the Jal and Isa al -Islam and the Yajuj and Majuj, uh, they are the major signs of Qayama. Um, so we'll discuss those in, in more detail, inshallah ta'ala, uh, and we'll get going. So the audio is working, alhamdulillah. It was surprising because uh, this has always worked, but today we have the Jal's topic, so, you know, something had to stop working. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, we, we will go uh, with our discussion. Okay, so like we have done in previous discussions, we review the uh, knowledge that we have in hadiths uh, and I review what the scholars have talked about these hadiths and then we create a picture and look at a comparison of what Muhammad Qasim has described uh, in his dreams about what he has seen about the job. So uh, we begin first uh, with uh, many of the hadiths uh, that I have put down here. I have highlighted the main part uh, because we want to look at the uh, main aspect of uh, the hadiths uh, so we will skip the uh, other content and we will just read the main main parts uh, so in many of the hadiths uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has actually left the ummah with clues um, that will help them identify the real identity of the jal for when the the jal comes uh, and this is very important because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, uh, mentioned to uh, uh, the Sahabas, Prophet Muhammad said that from the time of Adam alayhi salam 
to his time, which is the last prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All the prophets that have come have warned their people about the jal. So the topic of the jal is not something that has to be taken lightly. Yes, in the past there hasn't been much discussions about it or. Uh, the topic sort of has died over time, but we're living in a time where now we're witnessing that the minor signs of Kayama are complete and uh, the major signs of Kayama can come at any point in time. So the topic of the Jal is very, very much relevant and we should all educate ourselves uh, upon some of these. Um, but we look at the identity that has been described in the Hadiths. Uh, this particular Hadith is uh, uh, when... Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw in in a dream. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallam saw Isa alaihi salam, and then he also saw uh, a person with a huge body, red complexion, and a curly hair. And this person was blind in one eye. Uh, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that in the dream, uh, the eye looked like a protruding out grave, so something that is sticking out of the eye. Um, uh, that was the dream of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in that dream he said that this is ad dajjal. Then we have another narration from uh, Abdullah, and in this narration, uh, once again the mentioning of the the child having uh, being blind in one eye. Uh, on this particular hadith, it says while al masih al dajjal is going to be blind in the right eye. Uh, and his eye looks like a protruding grave. Um, and it is mentioned over here that we must not mistake uh, the Dajjal for what he will end up or coming to claim for Allah uh, is not hidden or Allah is not one eyed. Uh, so it is important that this sort of gives us a clue that when the Dajjal comes, that the Dajjal will come in and he will begin uh, claiming to be God or he will begin claiming to be. Uh, uh, the creator so uh, this this hadith exemplifies that and then we have another hadith with uh, once again confirms that the jal will be blind in one eye um, and there is there will be written letters which will clearly say kafir on his forehead and most or people or muslims with the right belief uh, will be able to identify the jal uh, when they when they see this, inshallah. Then uh, in another hadith, a uh, bit more information is described about the jal. Uh, this uh, hadith is narrated by Ubaidah ibn Samid, uh, and he heard the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the uh, Antichrist or the jal is short. Uh, he has a hen toad or a pigeon toad, uh, something where the uh, the toes or the uh, parts of the toes connected to the foot they are spread out a little bit uh he, he's got woolly hair or which means that it's curly hair uh one eyed uh, which means that he can only see from one eye um and in this uh, particular hadith it is mentioned that the eye is neither protruding or deep seated so it means that it is uh, a normal eye uh, the eye that the dajjal cannot see uh, from uh, which obviously con contradicts the previous one, but the previous one was a, a dream that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw. In this one, it's a more detailed description uh, in the hadith. Then there's uh, another hadith which also once again confirms that the jal will be one-eyed, which means that he can only see from one eye. Uh, he will have a wide forehead, a broad upper chest, and he will also be hunchbacked. Hunchback meaning that the back is a little bit bent, uh, but uh, uh, it's a bit confusing and we'll look into <clears throat> that. So based on the analysis of many hadiths and what the scholars have uh, discussed about the jal, what he might look like, uh, they have given a small profile and they uh, the scholars believe that the jal will appear in a younger age or a middle age uh, man. He will uh, be blind in one eye. Uh, the other eye might be protruding or may not be, may look absolutely normal. Uh, we 
it can't exactly conclude from the hadiths because there's two contradicting points. What the uh, scholars say is that the hadith where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw in a dream, the jal that dream was actually showing that his one eye is fake. Um, so there is a possibility that he will have a physical abnormality in the eyes. Uh, and also that there won't be a physical abnormality in the eyes, uh, whereas he will only be able to see from one eye, the other eye will be blind. Uh, the jal will also have thick or curly hair. Um, it is also uh, concluded that the jal will have a dark or a reddish uh, complexion, skin color. Um, he will have a strong uh, built body, uh, but he will not be tall. Um, he will have uh, his uh, toes uh, looking like pigeon or, or looking like a hen, which is, you know, how the hens have uh, separating toes, um, which go in, uh, you know, different directions. Uh, instead of most of us, we have one direction going forward. Uh, so that's an indication of what his toes look like. He will have a wide forehead and uh, he will have a broad upper chest. And uh, once again, confirming that they will be three letters qaf fa ra uh, which is kafir which will be written on his forehead and only muslims will be able to identify uh, the child with this now according to muhammad qasim uh, muhammad qasim has actually seen the jal many times in his dreams he has seen the jal in the past and he has continued to see the jal uh, in many dreams uh, ongoing from from those the picture that he puts the uh, for the jal, uh, the way that he has seen the jal in his dreams, uh, Muhammad Qasim says that the jal's height is about six feet, one or two inches, which is an average uh, uh, average height in the Middle East uh, area. Uh, Muhammad Qasim says that he has seen the jal as a middle-aged person. Uh, he always appears with a cruel or angry face and he has a dark brown skin. Uh, he appears as clean shaved and he also bears a mole on his cheek. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot confirm which side of the cheek, but there's a mole on his cheek. Um, and uh, he has curly dark hair. So they're, they're woolly or curled dark hair that Muhammad Qasim has seen. And Muhammad Qasim describes him that he appears very similar to a South Asian or a Middle Eastern man, uh, but with a dark or a complexion or a reddish complexion. Uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that the Jal's both eyes appear the same. Uh, there's no difference, in, visual difference in, in between the left and the right. Uh, but he, it is possible that he could be blind in one eye. Uh, according to his dreams, he could not identify or clarify that. Uh, Muhammad Qasim has also seen that because the Jal has the abilities uh, that Allah has granted to him, that he has been able to gather over time, that he can shape shift. The meaning for that is that he can change his form uh, at his will when he wants to. Um, and this is something that very commonly is known uh, amongst the uh, people who practice uh, magic or sorcery, uh, that there are some abilities that they can get depending on the level that they have uh, they they are able to change their shape or form or their appearance in front of the other person uh, so uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that the Jal is able to change his uh, shape or his um, uh, appearance uh, he has seen sometimes the Jal appearing in a very scary form and sometimes he's seen the Jal appearing in a human form uh, so that's uh, that's the definition of what shape shifting means uh, and Muhammad Qasim has also seen that Iblis uh, refers to uh, the Jal as his rich warlord uh, which means that the, uh, the Jal is going to play a very important role in the scheme of Iblis um, and uh, th that's why Iblis has given him a very high status uh, within, within his ranks uh, perhaps you can say. Um, now that we have a picture of identity of uh, 
of the Jal. Uh, what we can conclude is what Muhammad Qasim has seen, the uh, description that he has given about the Jal in his dreams. Uh, it bears a very close resemblance to the uh, description that is presented uh, through the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are also many other clues uh, which are within the details of the dreams that Muhammad Qasim has seen, and these uh, dreams are available online for all of you to read. Uh, in these particular dreams, Muhammad Qasim uh, has uh, seen the elements that describe the nature of the jaw. And uh, we will briefly mention some of them, uh, inshallah, in uh, the coming uh, slides. And you will uh, get a clarification on what, what that actually means, inshallah. Um, now we look at some more hadiths about the abilities, the powers, and the deception that the Dajjal uh, will bring uh, when he arrives. Uh, now we have to keep in mind that there is a time of the Dajjal's emergence. And uh, there's a time of the Jal's uh, arrival onto the world stage. Uh, but in the scheme of things, the Jal has existed uh, from uh, the past, from millennia, a long time ago. And the way that we know it is uh, from the hadith that we have of the Christian brothers who get lost on the sea and they bought lands to uh, onto an island and over there they're greeted by uh, by a creature that has hair all over its body and that creature then takes uh, those people to someone who's uh, got a very uh, scary huge uh, looking body uh, and that scary person uh, is chained and uh, that scary person then asks them the questions and he identifies uh, himself that he's the Dajjal and then uh, that he will be able to come out soon. So we know from some of the hadiths that the Dajjal has existed for a long time, uh, but he hasn't appeared yet. So why has he not appeared? And uh, some of these things that if you question or think about them, you will see from the hadiths uh, what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described about what the Jal is going to be and what he will become from a person who's chained uh, on an island to what things he he's able to do. Obviously, there is a progression. And that progression means that he is developing those skills or developing those abilities uh, or whatever he's doing. Or there might be other things that he's developing support uh, in this world, which obviously the Jal will need to have uh, to come on to uh, a global uh, scale or a uh, public scale. Uh, so those things we must uh, keep in mind when we, uh, when we are looking at the Jal and his abilities and analyzing them. But uh, we look at, obviously, some of the things that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned in, in the hadiths. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that uh, uh, the Jal would be blind and he would bring along with him an image of paradise or and an image of hellfire. Uh, and what he would call his paradise would be his hellfire. And what obviously his fell, hellfire will be uh, the paradise. Um, and then in the next hadith, the, there's a description of the Jal uh, saying that the left eye is blind. He's got thick hair. And he will have a garden and fire with him. And his fire would be a garden and his gar garden would be a fire. Uh, so once again, that's uh, showing you the image of uh, paradise that the Jal will carry with him. And the uh, image of hell that he will carry with him. Um, and then we look at uh, another hadith which mentions that uh, there was a concerned Sahaba and the Sahaba asked the Prophet uh, وسلم, uh, what is it that you know the Dajjal will have? And he his concern was that he's heard that the Dajjal will have a mountain of bread and a river of water going along with him, uh, that he will have the abundance of food and water. And the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, nah, he is too mean to be allowed such a thing by Allah. So that uh, what he, uh, it, this means in this uh, hadith or according to this hadith is that he may have an image of this or a false uh, perception that he's carrying this, but it won't be something that would uh, exist in reality. Um, and that's why then the, there's a mention that uh, 
the child will be a test for mankind. Uh, it will be a test to determine whether they believe in Allah or whether they believe in Ad Dajjal. Uh, so, uh, once again, a very important hadith that describes that. Uh, there is another hadith uh, that is narrated by Al Nawas. Actually, uh, this is a very long hadith, and I recommend if you want to know uh, or learn about the Jal or the events uh, that will happen after the Jal, closer to the end times, the, this is a very good hadith to refer to. Um, and uh, in this hadith, it is described almost all of the events. Uh, about the child, what he looks like, uh, and there are many clues. But for the purpose of his abilities and powers and deception, uh, I will read a small part of this hadith. Uh, and in this hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that uh, the child will travel uh, fast like clouds when they're driven by the wind. Uh, he will come to some people and call them and they will believe him and respond to him. Then he will command to the sky to rain and earth. Uh, to bring forth vegetation uh, and their cattle will come back to them in the evening with their humps very high and their udders full of milk uh, and their flanks stretched. So the uh, uh, assets that people will have or things that people will have, they will come back uh, with a, a full amount or whatever it is that they can withhold um, uh, and the assets will look or they will have an impression that they are full or complete. Uh, then he will go to another group of people and uh, he will call them, but they will reject him. So to those people, he will leave them and they will be stricken with famine, uh, which means that they will not have any food or water um, and none of their wealth uh, will be remaining in their hands. Uh, so basically they will go into poverty. And then he will pass the runes and will say, bring forth your treasure and the treasure will come from uh, the ground or from everywhere like a swarm of bees and that treasure will then follow him. And then there's another mention that he will call upon uh, a youth. He will strike him with a sword and cut him in two pieces. And then uh, in the distance, he will call that person again and that person will come up alive again and join and become one uh, human being again. Um, once again, very important hadith, uh, but it describes some of the abilities and the powers and the deception that the Jal will have uh, with his abilities that he will display openly in, in public. Um, and then we have another hadith where uh, also once again similar sort of thing is mentioned um, where uh, the, a question was asked um, and uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that a part of the Dajjal's uh, fitna is going to be that a Bedouin uh, or a, an Arab will ask will be asked, do you think that if I resurrect your father and mother for you, that you will testify that I am your Lord? And that person will reply, yes. Uh, and then there will be two devils that will appear or two jinns that will appear in the form of his image of his father and mother. And they will say, oh, my son, follow him for he is your Lord. And this will be once again another deception that uh, the Dajjal will display. But it also indicates the abilities that he will have, that he will be able to pick up an image of someone's parent and father. And that will be replicated by the, uh, the jinns or the devils at that time um, to be able to deceive mankind. Uh, so based on the knowledge of the hadiths um, about the abilities and the powers and deception that the, the jal will carry uh, we can conclude uh, some of these items that the dajjal will have the ability to control what people see or feel um, now what we have seen uh, about this or what we can relate back to in the quran uh, where we have the stories of Musa alayhi salam and at, at the time where magic was rampant in Babylon, uh, we see similar examples where the magicians of that time, they were able to manipulate what people were able to feel. They were able to instinct fear in their eyes, uh, in their hearts by what they were able to show to them. Uh, and that was obviously through the practice of black magic and the, through the uh, use of the ability of the, the jinns. Uh, so the Jal possibly will have the similar abilities or uh, similar powers, but his practice level will be very, very high. Uh, 
uh, his ability uh, to be able to perform those tricks will be very high. And the Jal will perform uh, some unseen magical tricks, things that we have not witnessed in our lives. Um, the Jal obviously will also carry a false image of heaven and hell. And once again, this is uh, being described here that there will be a false image, which means that um, it is once again a magic trick uh, that there will be an image uh, that carries forward. And in one of the uh, narrations where I've mentioned that the image of the hell that he carries forward will be actual heaven, whereas the image of the heaven that he carries forward will be the actual hell. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, a very uh, descriptive past of about how he will be able to control magic. Uh, and then uh, from the other hadith, we have also noted that the Jal will be able to travel fast. This is why he will be able to travel all the world in the 40 days that he has. Um, and uh, there's a description of how the, the Jal will be able to travel using the uh, the clouds. And this also happened during the time of Suleiman alayhi salam, uh, where uh, Suleiman alayhi salam, uh, the, the story describes that the um, travel that he could get to places uh, through the power of winds. Uh, once again, a similar story here. Uh, and uh, obviously, Suleiman al-Islam did not practice magic. He was given the kingdom of uh, the jinns who were able to take him from one place to another. Uh, but uh, here, the Dajjal will have the ability to utilize the jinns for a similar uh, path or similar way. And once again, in the world of black magic, um, in the world of uh, these activities or sorcery, uh, traveling uh, or uh, going from one place to another uh, is a known fact and uh, a higher degree sorcerer uh, is able to perform these things. Uh, the Jal once again uh, will show a promise or show life of good money, food and women uh, to his followers. Uh, this will be a deception that he will display to his followers. Uh, whereas those who will reject, they will be persecuted, they will be killed, and they will be forced to live in famine. And this is where a lot of the Muslims, uh, Muslim lives will be lost, lost when the Jal comes into the world. Um, the Jal will appear to be performing miracles, uh, which is the miracle that he uh, performs or brings back a person from, from death. Uh, but this, once again, will be a deception that he displays. Um, and uh, in the hadith, the person who comes back to life, uh, that person uh, says to the Jal that now I'm even more convinced that you are the Dajjal because this is the story that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have left for us that the Dajjal will be able to do this. So uh, if that person comes back and he still has the memory, uh, that means that what the Dajjal was able to do was a mere perception or it was a, uh, a mere magical trick uh, to deceive the people. Uh, and once again, whatever the Jal is able to do is not real, but it appears uh, like it is a real feat uh, because it's something that we have not experienced, we have not seen, uh, and we will see uh, it as that. And this is why uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described uh, and uh, advised to uh, the Ummah that the fitna of the Jal will be the worst fitna uh, for uh, the entire mankind. Uh, and it is a test uh, of, of ultimate belief. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fitna of the Dajjal. Uh, it is something that the uh, even the hadiths mentioned that if someone comes to the Dajjal, um, even if they are amongst the faithful, there's a very high chance or very high likelihood that they will be able, they will be convinced by the Dajjal and they will join him. Now, according to Muhammad Qasim's stream, some of the things that Muhammad Qasim has seen about the Jal, uh, he has seen that the Jal walks on uh, the earth with pride uh, and dominance, as if he's the king or he rules the earth. Um, he Muhammad Qasim has also seen in various uh, dreams of his that the Jal is slowly developing his powers or collecting his powers. Uh, before his final appearance and he has seen the Jal performing some uh, black magical um, say activities or 
uh, processes where he is able to collect these uh, energies and store these energies for his use. Um, and uh, he uses uh, or performs this by using uh, black magical harnessing plants. Um, and that's once again, it's part of uh, uh, the dream of Muhammad Qasim. Uh, and this storage that he's doing, he's doing it to power something for the future or when he needs it. Um, and once again, this is something that is commonly done or known within the world of sorcery or black magic. Uh, in one of the dreams, actually, uh, Muhammad Qasim saw that the Jal was preparing and he warned in one dream, uh, he said that very soon my powers will increase and I will Acquire some new powers. So it's indicating that he's going to some levels or higher levels. And I will implement my fear across the entire world, and the whole world will either submit to me or otherwise I will kill them. Uh, so it's confirming the fact that what the, the, has been described in the hadiths uh, that when the Jal comes, he will seek to uh, see mankind submit to him and he will claim something. Uh, that he's a lord or he's god uh, and then whoever agrees to him he will be able to give them something uh, that they want like money power wealth or women uh, whereas the ones that uh, reject him he will kill them and this is something that muhammad qasim describes that he saw uh, uh, the jal say very specifically in his dream uh, Muhammad Qasim also says that he saw the Jal uh, portraying himself as a pious and religious person. Uh, so uh, the Jal is uh, in one of the dreams of Muhammad Qasim. He saw the Jal is doing good things for the public, uh, good things for the humanity. He's doing them. But on the other hand, he also has a um, negative side where he's planning uh to harness those powers and to do bad for humanity. Uh, Mohammed Qasim says that he sees the Jal's uh, powers in some of his dreams and the way that he develops these powers, um, because these powers are something that no one has seen before, uh, many people will begin um, believing in uh, the Jal and he will come up to a point where he's seen Muhammad Qasim says in his dream he saw that the Jal begins to claim that he is God uh, and uh, he appeals to the masses because of the powers that he has. Um, now the Jal's one of the promises that the Jal will make to his people obviously I mentioned was uh, the power women uh, money and influence and this is something that even the basic human desires we want uh, this is why we see societies being corrupt the leaders being corrupt uh, but the jal also promises uh, people eternal youth and immortality and uh, this has been shown to muhammad qasim in one of his dreams uh, the the jal also is able to perform supernatural feats or supernatural abilities uh, what you will see uh, in movies like Marvel movies where you see Thor character or you see uh, Captain America character and some of these other characters that are performing uh, really strong skills, things that are uh, yet for us, it is our imagination uh, of what superpowers will be able to do, but the child will actually be able to perform them in real life. Um, he will have uh, power over certain things and the way that he displays them uh, and uh, these are obviously just examples uh, but he is able to use or harness his black magical powers to the uh, best extent to display those uh, abilities and uh, Muhammad Qasim says that it is only uh, by the decree of Allah that he has seen that uh, the child is able to do these things uh, as he is the greatest trial for mankind um, now, subhanAllah, we have learned many things about the Jal, um, and obviously the uh, ulamas have presented a very detailed narrative about uh, the Jal's abilities and the fitna that he will uh, be able to perform. Uh, there's a lot of commentary out there, but 
uh, as I mentioned previously, that the purpose of our videos is to draw our audience uh, a comparison between Muhammad Qasim streams and uh, what is present in the hadiths. And what we see from the hadiths uh, and Muhammad Qasim stream is that there's a significant similarity. Now, uh, as far as the Jal is concerned, Mama Qasim has seen that the Jal is always active. The Jal is performing uh, or planning to perform uh, things within the countries. He doesn't do it himself. He performs it or delivers it through his accomplices, uh, whether they be armies or groups of people um, or groups of jinns, whatever, the, whatever that might constitute too. But the Jal is continuously active. And Muhammad Qasim has also seen that Dajjal comes to learn about Muhammad Qasim, uh, that he is spreading the, the message of Islam uh, and he's spreading the message against Dajjal. And then Dajjal begins to attack Muhammad Qasim and he's uh, visualized that in, in his dream. In one of his dreams, in fact, he saw that Dajjal comes to find uh, Muhammad Qasim in his house, but Muhammad Qasim is hiding and Dajjal ends up killing someone else. Um, and uh, he sees that uh, performed with, in front of his eyes uh, in, in the dream. Now, most certainly the fitna of the Jal is going to be the worst fitna of uh, that mankind will ever witness. Uh, and once again, uh, our Prophet wasallam used to regularly pray um, uh, and ask Allah's protection from the Jal, from the Jal's fitna. And I also recommend uh, you to do the same because it's the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and inshallah we pray uh, every day to uh, ask Allah's protect protection and forgiveness. But one thing that we also should understand is that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have left us uh, with very important messages uh, about how we as Muslims can protect ourselves from the job. Um, and uh, the instructions that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have left, uh, we should follow them. Muhammad Qasim has also seen in his dreams that uh, performing those uh, protective measures is the best way to protect against the Jal and the Jal's fitna. Uh, and uh, once again, things like uh, reciting Surah Kahf on, on Friday or memorizing the first 10 verses of Surah Kahf uh, or in some of the other narrations, also the last 10 verses of Surah Kahf uh, is very important. Uh, and now that we know that the fitna of the Jal, uh, perhaps it will come within our lifetime as we see from Muhammad Qasim's dreams, the way that the Malhama is situating itself to uh, occur in, in the next few years uh, to come. We will most certainly uh, witness the fitna of the Jal in the next 15 to 20 years once the uh, period of peace uh, has gone through. Um, which also is a scary situation, obviously, for, for uh, any human being to be in. Uh, but uh, once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reflected or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left us with the, uh, the knowledge and has left, uh, uh, guided the prophets to leave us with the knowledge that we can use to protect ourselves and our families. And uh, we should practice this regularly uh, and inform our families and our uh, immediate friends to be able to protect ourselves from the fitna of the child when it comes. So uh, we'll have a look at some of the questions and uh, then we'll close uh, the, the topic. Now, next week, we will discuss more in detail about the wars of the Jal and how these wars uh, will happen and then how Isa alayhi salam uh, arrives and uh, is able to kill the Jal and then what happens when the coming of Yajuj and Majuj happens. So these are some important topics. Um, obviously, major signs of Qayama, which will happen once uh, the, the Jal arrives. The rest of the events will happen very, very quickly. Uh, so inshallah, we'll review them in our uh, session next week. Um, now, as far as questions are concerned, we have a question here from our brother. Why is there no more dreams from Muhammad Qasim? Uh, the way that the dreams uh, aspect works is that Muhammad Qasim shares the dream that he wants to share in public. Uh, those dreams are then created in a video format. Uh, and then that video is uploaded online. 
um, and uh, there's a system or perhaps people responsible for those activities. Uh, as far as I know, uh, the dreams are uploaded online, first of all. So I encourage you to visit the website, mohammedkasimpk.com uh, and have a look at those websites for the newest dreams. Uh, all the latest dreams that uh, there are some dreams that don't have videos made because they're not relevant, uh, but then they are uploaded onto the website. So that would be the first place for you to go if you want to look at uh, some of the new dreams of Mohammed Kasim. uh okay the jal will rule for 40 days a day like a year a day like a month a day like a week and a day like a normal day is there interpretation by muhammad qasim uh, as far as what i know muhammad qasim has described that the jal lives for 37 days um in on earth now those are the 37 days that are uh, that he lives as a normal human being um what is the meaning of the hadith where the jal stays for uh, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week? Uh, that might be that the dajjal appears and something happens or he stays in the background for a year and a month and one week before he finally comes out. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but I will ask this question and we will inshallah get some more detail uh, about that what muhammad qasim knows about it obviously muhammad qasim is only describing what he has seen in his dreams uh, and he doesn't make things up or he doesn't interpret so if he's unable to uh, deliver an answer then uh, it is what it is unfortunately we don't know much about it uh okay any more questions Kas uh okay can't say this one out loud uh there's someone who's done a calculation of uh when the dajjal will come out and when the mahdi will be there okay muhammad qasim is a true man wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone okay uh, guys, if you do have questions, you can post them in here and inshallah, while we're doing this live session, we can answer some of your questions. Um, it looks like there is no uh, no other important question, so we'll uh, make a closure on this uh, discussion for today. So next week, inshallah, we'll talk about the wars that the Jal uh, will bring, how Isa alayhi salam will come and... Uh, kill the jal uh, and then we'll learn a little bit more about the final events before qiyama uh, and how they are happen or bound to happen to occur inshallah jazakallah khair for joining us today uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you safe in his mercy and uh, eid mubarak once again to all of you